Good evening and welcome to another edition of Film Nut. I am your host, Jeff Schubert. Glad you can join us. Well, true confession over here, I am not a gamer. My idea of gaming is Space Invaders and Mrs. Pac-Man. I think it's Miss Pac-Man, actually. But in preparation for tonight's show, I caught myself up on the web hit, The Guild. It's an internet show about a group of gamers who play together online and cross the line to become part of each other's real lives. Now, I have to tell you, you do not have to be a gamer to enjoy this show. I loved it. I caught up in one day watching all the episodes from season one all the way to season three. It's fantastic, it's very funny. And trust me, you do not have to be a gamer in order to enjoy it. That is an honest endorsement. I would not be rambling on this long if it was just typical host introductory stuff. So trust me on that one. Um, after its second season and a misunderstanding being cleared up involving Urkelgate, my guest tonight, Sean Becker, was brought on to be the director and they let him continue in season three even though there was this problem with Urkel that maybe I'll uh, ask him about that he didn't know I was going to ask him about. Prior to joining the Guild, Sean was already a successful uh, web content producer, director, and writer, and he also acts in some of his stuff with shows like Comedy Gumbo and the gorgeous comedy Chicken Machine. They do say that, in fact, the future of entertainment lies in the World Wide Web, and with us tonight is one of its up-and-coming stars, Sean Becker. Sean, thanks for coming on. That was a hell of an intro. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you made me sound cool. You're very cool. I, I learned stuff about myself, I think, in that intro. But no, thank you for having me. I love it. I'm, I'm loving uh, this. <laughs> this is new. This is very new. Yes, it is. I've been catching up on your show as well, and it's a very good show. But uh, this is was a surprise to well, see. Well, I'm, uh, I'm actually acting in a short of my own that I've written and direct, write, writing and directing in process, So, but we'll talk about that another time. No, what is this short? I, <laughs> oh, wait, no, you're interviewing me. That's I'm right, sorry. that's yeah. right. So, uh, yeah, Urkelgate, real quick, because we want to get into more important things. Yeah, that wasn't part of the pre-show yeah, uh, right. <laughs> discussion. Um, uh, you were fired. I was, uh, I, yeah, kind of, via Twitter, which I think is like a reasonable tool in, in messaging or anything. But basically, um, I, was, I joke around with Felicia Day, the creator of the Guild, a lot, and I think on Twitter, um, I was like watching TV one day and there was the Family Matters episode where Urkel does the Urkel. I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. It's like sure. a monumental event monumental in television. Monumental event in television history, history. Yes. You're an idiot if you don't know it. That's right. You know? So anyways, I had said like, oh, that's cool. I remember that. So I, would put out, I put out a, a tweet, which I'm still getting used to saying that word, tweet, but yes. I put out a tweet that said, Hey everyone, do the Urkel. And then Felicia's response right away was at Sean Becker to me, fired. Apparently not a fan of the Urkel dance. <laughs> yes. Or or television history right, in right. general. But um no, so I, she did that and all of a sudden like the online community being what it is, like, what what is this? What is this? Like, is he really fired? What's going on? And then I kind of uh I guess added to the fire by putting out response videos. Right. Which, which were fun, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. And um those just kind of fielded, but like a lot of people actually thought, and it was in, it was on like wow.com had done an article on it, and they were like, did he really get fired? And people actually thought it was true, but no, it was all just one big fun joke, and uh, took up, well, like, I made two videos. <laughs> <laughs> so, wasted time maybe, but it was still fun. It was fun. So, on to the Guild. Great, great show, incredible writing, great performances, great direction. You were brought in in season two. So you have Felicia Day, who's the writer-actress. You have Sandeep Parikh, who's also a writer-director. You have Jeff Lewis, who's got a great comedy background. The whole group has a rich creative background. You come in as a director. Who has what input, and how do you kind of bring it all together? Well, Felicia's, you know, the creator of the show, the writer. I mean, it's, it's her show. She's, you know, the mastermind behind everything. And in doing that, she wrote um, a lot of the parts for, you know, the two main uh, for Vork, uh, Jeff Lewis, and um, Zabu Sandy Parikh, um, and who just brings so much to their characters. I mean, their characters were written for them, and they're so enthusiastic. Like they'll show up to set, and they'll have suggestions that they want to do. And kind of my my role is to kind of, you know, take Felicia's writing, take the performances, and then make sure that we get what we're what we set out to get, which is the original script. And then you know, um, usually we'll we'll have time for like alternate lines, alternate things. But kind of just like to almost watch everyone and when you get Felicia, Sandeep and Jeff together they almost need like babysitting at, right. at times because <laughs> they're having so much fun and in the recent season we did, I think it's on the outtake reel, um, there's one moment where there's a line where Sandeep would say marshmallow zabus and so in every take they're all talking about what flavored marshmallow, this has nothing to do with the scene by the way right, right. and, and they're, they're getting more into like okay we're gonna go again and then I just hear okay which flavor should I be now like maybe you should be lychee maybe you should be and it's like maybe we should say the lines that, that you wrote and right. then 
No, but they're, they're, I mean, everyone's just a blast to work with. And, you know, as fun as the show is, it's a ton of fun to make as well. So everyone's having fun and, and maybe doing a little improv, getting some other things in, but you're the one who's gonna, you maybe, and is there a script supervisor on the show? Yes, there is. Okay, have to kind of make sure for continuity purposes that you're getting what you set out to do. Yes, of course, which we always do, and, you know, kind of depending on our time and what we do, we love to, like, play around on set, and Felicia's always, you know, she wants to make sure it's the best show that can be. So sometimes we're on set and like a line may not work, so we'll, you know, she'll just rewrite the line just like that. But I mean, it, it, when it comes down to it, it's definitely her show. She's, she's responsible for everything. Well, one interesting thing you said before we came on was you would talk about how certain scenes and episodes might be shot weeks apart. And as a result of that, you have to kind of direct the actors to do lines in various ways to guarantee that there'll be a match. Is that right, or can you explain that? Yeah, no, it's, it's funny, because when I first came on the show, I was thinking, you know, oh, it should be pretty easy. It's just people playing games, talking to a webcam. Like, how hard can that be? But, like, it's extremely hard. Like, because <laughs> you want to make sure that everyone is on par so that when you're editing, like, if someone reacts a certain way, we've got responses from everybody else. And so, you know, and like you said, we do shoot sometimes weeks apart, even though that scene all takes place at the same time. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll shoot the scene the way we, we originally intended, and then if we have time, we'll get, you know, maybe, you know, bring it down a little bit on this line or get, you know, maybe uh, say this line confused, say this line, because you never know in two weeks, especially if you're dealing with Jeff, Sandeep, or Felicia, if they may come up with an improv on set, but then the problem is we don't have a reaction to match that from everyone else. So we try to get um, a range on everyone as we're shooting. Wasn't there a specific example that you were telling me about with the reaction phase from from Jeff, from something um, Amy had done? Yeah, in this season, um, there's a, a moment on season three where uh, Codex gets fed up with Jeff backseat leadering the whole time, and so she finally like lets loose, and in Codex's way, she calls him a poo face, which to Codex, that's a big deal. Right. That's basically the middle <laughs> finger, you know, and so, um, we originally had shot that, and then you know we made sure that she got really intense and fierce about it, and she like almost holds back, like she doesn't want to say it, and then just poop face. And then when we shot Jeff two weeks later, there was one moment where I'm like, do like you know an extreme reaction, and he did a triple take, which made it into the episode. Great. Um, and so no, it's just fun to have. I mean, I edit the show as well, so I'm always thankful um, as an editor that as a director I got enough footage to play with. And then as a director, I'm thankful that sometimes being an editor I can save my ass. Right, <laughs> right, right. We need to get around something. So, and it's not only footage. Traditionally when we think of editor and coverage, you think of it from a coverage uh, scene, or shot, shot selection, but it's also a way of delivering lines is mm -hmm. another way of being covered as an editor, correct? Yes, of course, yeah. And so like, we'll get that range, you know. But Felicia does a good job. Um, what we'll do is, you know, the actors aren't there, so when we're shooting anybody, it's just them and a camera, and then... So you're talking about when they're talking to each other on computer. In the guild chat In scene, the guild chat, yeah. it's just one person there talking to a camera. Yeah, yeah, and so that's it. So what we do is that Felicia actually will read the off-screen lines because since she wrote it and being an actress herself, she can give a lot of life to it so that um, the actors are actually bouncing off of another actor rather than just bouncing off a, a PA reading them, you know, right. without if they're not putting like inflection on, you know, certain lines and... The what guy from not? Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Bueller, anyone, that guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. we don't yeah. want, we, well that would just be a bunch of works then, that's if that's exactly. the case. <laughs> Every character would be Jeff Lewis. Well, this just in, Sundeep is in the room. That's horrible. That's the worst <laughs> news you could have told me. Yeah, now, now i got to get you to dish on him. Uh, Justin77 would like to ask, how did the music video come out, come to be? Um, I actually don't, I wasn't involved with the music video. Um, Felicia had written the song with uh, Jed Whedon, who I'm sure you're mm -hmm. familiar with the Whedons. Right. <laughs> and uh, they wrote it together, and then he directed the music video, and they released it. I, you know, I like to think of it as like a great promo for season three, because that went out, and then like just tons of fans, like gamers, non-gamers, kind of got together. But no, that was an idea that I think they wanted to do as a bonus, because um, we always do like, you know, a holiday video. or. Sure. Uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas video, and so with um, the music video, yeah, I think it was just something that she had an idea for, and they just set out and did it. Now, as I mentioned, uh, you did come on in season two, so was there any um, get acquainted period? Were they did they haze you at all? Any practical jokes on you? No, I don't. No, because when I came on, there were like I came on with almost like a crew, so we all came on together. But wouldn't that be weird if they did haze me? You know, like. <laughs> Like, it's, it seems like it'd be so unprofessional <laughs> trying to focus and people are like pulling pranks on right, set. Right. 
<laughs> but you do have some fun though with that with them now that you've been there for a while, right? Yeah, I mean a lot of the fun kind of I mean like on set of course like watching everyone like we'll try different things and and you know when we're shooting, but in editing I'll, I'll joke around a lot with Felicia and Kim Evie, who's another producer on the show. And I'll send them like cuts where I'm like, I want to know uh, what you think about this scene here. And I'll like, you know, mix it up in a way that's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> right. you know? But sometimes it'll make it in the show, like <laughs> as a joke. Like we have a Blades Batman transition. That transition between two scenes where like the familiar Batman logo coming uh -huh. out and coming in. And I did it as a joke at first, but part of me was like, maybe they'll go for it. And they did. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Happy Girl would like to ask, what editing software do you use? Um, I actually use uh, Apple Final Cut Pro. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if anyone else is familiar. We actually shoot the show on the Panasonic um, HVX 200, which is an HD camera. And then I edit everything in uh, Final Cut Pro. Now, you have a, a background where you've, you've been accepted to over 30 festivals, award-winning short films, and so forth. Do you shoot any differently working on something that you know is intended for the web versus it being a film or a short? No, um, no, not really. I mean, it's just kind of like the budget that we've got. Like when I first did short films, you know, we were very, very small budget. And so it was kind of like we just worked with what we had. Um, and then with the Guild, it's the same thing, like definitely with bigger budget, but working with what we have, like there's nothing special that we're doing. It's kind of like using our resources and using our equipment to the max. To make the best possible image sound and, and picture. Of course, and, so and it doesn't matter whether like you release something online. Like in our case with the Guild, it goes to DVD eventually, and then there's always the plans later on, you know. But so, but ultimately, the viewing size for something on the web is small versus the screens. But lens choices is n none of that is affected by. No, web it's just whatever we think works for the project. Whatever you know, we want to get the best camera. And at that time, um, the HVX was our best option, so we definitely went for it. We didn't have a reason to go with something lesser, and then we didn't have the budget to go for something greater. You know. Right. Well, I just want to give you a heads up. Don't say. Don't rag on Felicia anymore because Felicia's in the room. So, that's, that's even so, better. So, so I'm glad you got it all out. No, Felicia, he didn't say anything. Only wonderful, beautiful things. By the way, if you came in late, Felicia, love the freaking show. I watched every episode this week, caught up. It's fantastic. Great writer, great acting, everything. Urkelgate. Urkelgate. <laughs> I, I did bring up Urkelgate if you came in late. Uh, McKay's Life would like to ask, question, Sean, do you sometimes want to break away from Felicia's creative ideas? Oh, and she's in the room. And go on your own instinct. Felicia's in the room? <laughs> Never. Wait, ne which camera are we on? That's right. This one? Yeah. Never. Like, no, why not? Why would I? <laughs> but no, no, I mean, like, Fleech is really, uh, I think just with the Guild in general, like, everyone, I like to look at everything that I work on as a collaboration. Like, I'll never, I don't like to look, you know, unfortunately with it, like, Felicia is very open to ideas, whether it's from the actors or it's from myself or if it's from Kim. And then I'm the same way with post-production, if it's from, like, the sound mixer or if it's from... Um, the composer, you know, everyone who I talk to, like sometimes they'll give an input, like, hey, you know, I'm not really feeling this, maybe we should try it this way, and like a lot of times I'll go for it. But no, she's very open to stuff. I mean, she does such a great job. She does such a great job, <laughs> she's watching still, right? Editing, uh, writing the show that like, you know, there's definitely just a great foundation to go off of, but at the same time, like, we all want the show to be as good as it can be. Do the uh, sponsors have any influence over the content? Microsoft, Sprint, right? Who else are your sponsors? Uh, Microsoft, Sprint, um, I believe that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the two main. I mean, like, like Zune is, but they're a part of Microsoft, and Xbox is, but they're a part of Microsoft. So um, they are, uh, but no, no, I mean, the show's all Felicia. I don't think she gets notes on the show. I think that they, I think she just puts the show out, and then they just let her do it. Now, in season two, one difference between two and one, I noticed is, um, I don't know if the budget got bigger then. I'm assuming maybe it did a little bit. But it seemed like there were uh, bigger scenes, broader scenes, more action. I remember early in season two, there was a, you brought in the stun guy, and he falls down the yeah, stairs. Yeah, we, we had a stunt coordinator. It was great. We had, um, we had a stunt guy who was an actual stunt guy, and then we had a stunt coordinator as well. But no, I mean, it was just all like part of the writing, like Felicia wanted to step it up. We have a little uh, joke that, you know, between season one and two, we always had like a special effect at the end, you know? So right. it was just something fun that we know we got to do. And uh, the big party scene that spread out over a couple episodes, right? Was that a fun one to shoot? It was. It was fun, like, as a fan of the show, too, because we finally got everyone together. Mm -hmm into the show and so like the whole season we've been shooting in bedrooms and one webcams and everyone's been like by themselves but by the end you know it was fun it was fun as a fan of the show just to see everyone kind of come together and then you know we were able to shoot those scenes and it was fun to see actors actually work off one one another rather than off of uh, someone reading lines off of camera was it fun for you in a in a fun challenging kind of way to get to s 
have to shoot a big crowd scene, if you will? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, we had a stunt coordinator, like, on set who handled a lot of the fight, and we actually held, like, rehearsals, which I've never done before. Right. But it was really fun to, like, go out and, like, use stunt mats and, like, right. kind of choreograph a scene. And then it made it so much easier rather than kind of just showing up on set and thinking, how are we going to put this together, right. you know? Um, so, we know, I mean, with the show, and, you know, we shoot in a very tight schedule, like, we have to come, like, extremely prepared. But were some of those episodes longer to shoot than some of the episodes by comparison yeah, where they are? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A uh, website guy would like to ask, every character shot seems to have its own feel. Who decided the visual theme of each character? Um, I think it was like, kind of, a, I mean, like, they had, um, a lot of it was in the characters, too. Like, you have Vork, who's got, like, you know, he's the organized one. He's got his um, set, which is basically... You know, very organized. You got Tink, which is very colorful. Um, I mean, it just comes together. It, it's a collaboration between Felicia, between um, our director of photography, John Schmidt, and then between our art uh, designer as well. Now, I, one thing I do notice is uh, the language is is bleeped out if ever there's a four letter, if you will. Is that a creative choice, or is that because it won't air on certain places? Uh, that's because uh, Microsoft just bleeps them. Um, I'm thinking because like they're a corporation and they want to make sure that the show is accessible to everyone just to make sure that like we kind of keep at a PG-13 rating sure. um, for the show. But it's funny because I swear a lot, and I'm trying not to swear during this interview. But right, like, right. And, 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 it's the same, and it's the same with everyone on the show, too. Like We all just swear a lot. And I never had noticed how much there was until the show got bleeped out. Like We have the new scene with the Axis of Anarchy, and it was the first Guild chat scene with them. And I remember just like watching it on Xbox and just bleep, 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 bleep the whole entire time. Right, right. It, it's funny, but no, when they come out on YouTube and DVD, they are, um, the bleeps are taken out. Okay. A any other special perks that you get on the DVDs? Uh, it's a lot of bonus features, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Uh, there's Easter eggs, um, got to hunt for those, and then commentaries as well. Now, the, the formula for the show seems to kind of be uh, pick up on a little bit of what happened in the previous episode, maybe provide a little bit of a segue, if you will. Uh, set up, you know, the act of what's going to be to come, the fun of that, and then the cliffhanger. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that where you strive to, to hit those notes in every episode? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot of, I mean, of course, that's in the writing, mm -hmm. but um, we're getting people coming back to watch, and I think for the most part, people are excited because, but then like you read the comments, and it's like, what the hell? I have to wait another week to see what happens. You're killing me. You're torturing me. But then, you know, <laughs> they come back. So, um, with this season, in particular season three, was nice because um, I've just finished the DVD content and I've seen, the I've seen the season as a whole now and I think it plays so well as a whole because you don't have to wait those weeks. It's like you can watch the build right. of the season and then the final uh, resolution as well. well. How are the fans reacting to the little uh, turmoil amongst the guild? Um, I think, uh, well, I know just reading, I, 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 I try to say that I don't go on the message boards. Like sometimes someone will say like, hey, have you read? I'm like, oh, I never pay attention. I, I, I read everything. I right. read I read every single comment <laughs> that comes out. But um, no, I think, um, I, I know a lot of people don't like the fact that the guild is being beat up on every single episode. But then fortunately we saw the comedy there on it. But uh, we just recently had episode 10, which is when the guild gets back together. Right. And it was so great to just see the response of yeah. everyone like, Finally, they're back together. I've waited all season for this. And if we had done that earlier in the season, it wouldn't have had that kind of an impact. Because if you have nine episodes of the guild just getting beat up on and they're down, and then in episode 10, they're back together again, it's, it's just it's so much more effective. I mean, it's interesting. There has to be ebb and flow, peaks and valleys within any show. You know, like Ross and Rachel on Friends couldn't be together forever, right? They mm -hmm. had to break them up, bring them back together, break them up you know, for an ebb and a flow. Let's get to another I am question. Kai Bars, Fangs, would like to ask, what was your favorite episode to work on? Um, I mean, I mean just because we just did season three, it's, uh, that's the one that just keeps popping up in my head. Um, I, I can't talk about it because we <laughs> haven't watched them yet. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you have a favorite of the ones you've done so far? No, I hate them all. I, no, them no. all. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I guess with season three, um, I guess I'll go back to season I'll go, I'll go back to the party scene. Um, Probably for just those same reasons I mentioned earlier. Like it was just, you know, spending the whole season with these actors, right. you know, and, and seeing these characters, you know, on their own. And then the day we all kind of show up and everyone's giving each other a hug, right. and everyone's like, now we get to finally act together right. in scenes. I mean, that, I mean, the the party scene's probably my favorite. That's nice. I would imagine working separately can sometimes maybe feel technical compared to 
really getting everyone in a room together. That's a nice feeling. Yes, yeah. it is. Let's see. Next IM comes from the reflection. How big was that beetle that landed on Will Wheaton? Was it as big as he made it out to be with his reaction? Will made it out to be about, <laughs> I think, good, yeah, let's say about. We, we can pick it up. <laughs> yeah, imagine this flying by you. This is about what Will, Will <laughs> reacted to. But no, I mean, it was pretty big. I mean, uh, and I think, actually, we never, I'll just mention it now because we never got to see it, but Mike Rose, who plays Valkyrie, I don't know if it was that same beetle, but there was another take where it was flying by and he just reached out, grabbed it, and just held it for the rest of the take. And you know, we were able to get through the whole take without being disrupted. Wow. Did you see uh, Manu Ginobili of the San Antonio Spurs with the bat in the middle of a basketball game? I did, game? yes. <laughs> I did. That was a basketball player. For those who didn't see it, there was a bat flying around in, a, in an NBA game, and everyone was scared. Everyone was scared. And then this one player just reached out, grabbed it, did his thing with it. It's pretty cool. Henley Fenix, what has been the biggest lesson for Sean while working on the Guild? Um, I, I mean, with the Guild in general, like, everything I've done before the Guild, I've had to do myself, like myself and my um, writing producing partner, Payment Benz, who I'm uh, involved with the Awkward Pictures. Like, him and I do everything. And so, with the Guild. Literally, you write, you direct, you produce, you act, you yeah, edit. Yeah, every single thing, promote, like promote. everything. And with the Guild, it's been so nice to just show up to set and direct. And so in doing that, like, I've definitely felt like I've grown as a director, like even from the start of season two to the end of season two, I've learned to work with extras, you know, I've learned, I've learned what a script supervisor right, is, right. you know, like we've never, we've never had that. Right. So it's just been great to have all these positions and actually come in and just do the one job and really focus on it and let everyone else worry about the other um, positions. I just remember uh, when I first started working on the Guild, there'd be times where like there'd be a plant or something and I'd just run over, I'd, I'd get up, take off my headphones, run over and be like, what are you doing? Like, there's people who are hired here right, to do right, that, right, right. Like, and I'm not used to it. But no, I've, I've learned, I've, I mean, I'm always gonna be learning, like, no matter what, like, you know, as far as my career goes, but um, I'd say now with the Guild, since I direct and I edit it, um, one thing that I did in season two a lot was I was always very picky on like making sure we got the perfect take. Whereas now I can, get a take from someone and the first part's great and the second part's not but I know that the second part was good two takes ago right. and I'm getting better at that and like combining um, footage you know and editing and and whatnot. Would you say it also in, it involves kind of a different skill set it's harder in the way that it's not your material so like you've written it you pre proed it you know to death so when you're directing your own stuff you really have it locked down you're coming in taking someone else's material uh, an established set, you know, having to communicate with the whole cast and crew and everything was that a un was that part of the uniqueness and that no, part of the yeah, it definitely was, and that's another thing is I had in college I had um, done a few shorts that weren't my own, and they were the worst things I've ever done. Like they're not anything I'm proud of, and some of them were even like existing scripts from like movies that I could have just copied. Right. You know, because we would do like take a scene from Clerks or take a scene from Chasing Amy. And they'd be okay, but I always found out that the best stuff that I had done was the stuff that I had written myself. So coming into the guild, that was another thing I was really concerned about was that I, you know, this is not my material. And so I hadn't succeeded at that level yet. Because um, everything I'd done to that point that had any kind of success was something I had written on my own. But, um, so that was a major challenge and a major intimidation too as well, because it's, you know, a show that's been established and I want to make sure I don't screw this up. That's right. Yeah. Now you mentioned your partner payment Benz, right? Mm -hmm. And Awkward Pictures. So, and I read in an online interview with you, you talked about um, you decided to do web content because, I don't know, you tell me if I'm getting it wrong, you were tired of film festivals or there were things about film festivals you were no yeah, we excited about? Yeah, we used to about. do film festivals, um, like coming out of college, like we did a lot of short films. And so when we were done, it was weird because with payment and myself, like a lot of people, when I when I graduated, a lot of people, you know, some people went off and did film, and a lot of people didn't. And I was like, no way, I was serious about this. Like I wanted to do this, you know. And so, <laughs> payment, I felt the same way. So him and I, you know, started doing short films together, and we would send them to festivals. And the problem with festivals, in my opinion, is that like there's no market for shorts. It's a good calling card. It's cool to see your project up on the big screen, but. Um, I mean, as far as like furthering your career, you know, it's, it's hard because the downfalls are you have to pay 
to even just submit. And then you have to wait four months, and then you may not get in. And so there was one point where myself, Payman, and our director of photography, Chris Darnell, we, the three of us, did three shorts. And then we said, you know what, let's take these, let's put them on, uh, let's not, I'm sorry, uh, let's submit them to festivals. I'll submit this one, you submit this one, you submit this one. And we ended up paying $500 a piece in submission fees. And we had to wait five months. And then five months later, I think we got into like the Oklahoma barbecue fest and film festival, you know, so like, well, it, wasn't, it, wasn't it was Kevin Smith's the, cousin discovered from that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it was something like that. And then we're just like, you know what, let's just put these online. And because even when you do get into the festivals, uh, just from what I've learned, it's like you get there and, you know, it can go either way. You give a packed crowd and, you know, do a Q&A and talk to people about it. But then once that Q&A is done, that's kind of the end of it. Um, you're not having anyone coming up to you, really. And so you might have someone that wants to collaborate with you, which is great. But if you're trying to sell it, like there's just no market for shorts. Um, whereas you can put it online, and it's seen by thousands instantly. And then you're automatically getting feedback, whether you know that's a good thing or a bad thing. But um, it's just so much more accessible to, to do that. Now, at Awkward Pictures, you guys have built a, a, a great brand for yourself in a very short span of time, hundreds of thousands of views between all the different content you have up there. How did you do that? Were you working with a marketing person? Is it, did you do it yourselves? Or how did you build up so fast such, have, a, such a following? I have 100,000 uncles. And, and they, <laughs> they all each watched it one yeah. time. You know? <laughs> no, we, um, I mean, we got really fortunate. Like, we got in uh, to YouTube in 2006. And that's kind of like when YouTube was, was launching. And we were able to kind of get our stuff out there without too much competition. But then using uh, MySpace, actually, we would just go around on MySpace, you know, of course, our own friends, like, hey, check out this video we did, check out this video. And then, you know, it's that old method of tell 10 people, they'll t tell 10 people. And then another thing that we did was just like, we would contact people who had similar tastes and interests in comedy that we did. And we wanted to make sure not to like spam people, so we just actually email them personal, like, hey, my name is Payment Benz, my name is Sean Becker. Uh, you know, we noticed that you're into Seinfeld, so are we, so please check out this stuff that we made. And we'd get a lot of positive feedback from that. So I mean, once in a while, you'd get someone who would say, like, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in what you have to do, and then we just won't bother them again. But for the most case, it, like, just through doing that, we built our fan base. So no magic tricks, no money in marketing, just you guys spending hours and hours and hours at the computer personally yep. contacting people us, and yeah. trying to get them to spread the word? Yep. That's fantastic. Do you have any uh, favorites of the things you guys have done together? Um, we've done, we, we did a show uh, for Crackle called Comedy Gumbo, which is a sketch show that we're extremely proud of. I believe it's a sketch show for people that don't have time for a sketch show. You've <laughs> done so much research. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of research. <laughs> no, that, that's great though, but um, no, yeah, so basically what Comedy Gumbo is, is it's a, like you said, sketch, it's kind of our version of like, watch our show for four minutes and you're gonna see six sketches. You know, and some of them are as short as like five, six seconds, and some of them are about a minute, you know. And so, um, that was a project that we had done, kind of going back into our old notebooks, finding old sketches, stuff we've always wanted to do. And that show, it's 10 episodes, it's um, 63 sketches total, which we wrote in 36 hours when it was time to write the show. And that's on Crackle, correct? That's on Crackle, yes. And now, how, how did, what kind of crew did you have for that? Um, it's kind of the same. I mean, when I worked with Chris and Payman, I mean, a lot of times it's just the three of us, you know, and that was before we did Comedy Gumbo. Um, a lot of our shorts we did, that way we'd bring in a couple of friends who wanted to help out, you know, or maybe we'd have a friend who'd come in double as an actor and a boom up. Right. But when we did Comedy Gumbo, um, we kind of kept that same thing going. Like, of course, you know, we had a little bit of a budget then, so we were able to bring in more people to help out. Um, but no, it was still very minimal skeleton crew. Well, I don't know if you can answer this one, but Sandeep Sandeep has a question for Sean. How can we? How can I even ask you? No relation. Who, who is the least fun actor to work with on the Guild? That's terrible. He can't answer that. That's the worst question. That's, that is terrible. They're all fun. What are you talking about? Um, oh no, actually, yeah, the uh, the babies. The babies. The Clara's babies. Clara's babies. Uh, they are divas, and they never stick to the script, and they just ad lib, and they are always bringing suggestions <laughs> right. and. You're very stubborn about them. So yeah, and 
they're all. They're, I think that well, <laughs> Clara had three kids in season one, and now she has two for some reason. Well, you brought in the husband, so one kid had to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? We only had so much craft service. Uh, that's right. But in all seriousness, you read an independent filmmaker books that two things that first or second time filmmakers shouldn't do, especially on a super low budget, is work with kids or animals. Mm -hmm. So is it challenging in all seriousness having babies? Yeah, definitely, because there's, there's an attention span. Right. I think you've got a window of maybe 30 seconds right. to get your shot before they figure out what's going on. Um, so the first time... I had shot with uh, the kids was in season two when they're attacking Clara and pulling out the DSL and going through all the cables. But it actually wasn't that hard because the, the, the parents were there and they were the ones who actually were like, no, go ahead and play. And fortunately, we're MOS, so we're not recording sound. So we're able to just tell them right away, like, all right, now pull this, pull that, pull this. And, and it's fine for about maybe two minutes. And then after that, like, if you don't, it's like the sun going down. Right. You know, like, we're losing suns, like, we're losing kids. Like, they're getting so uninterested in what's going on. But no, it's actually, um, it's different, it's new, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, we didn't have a problem with it, so right. we always got what we needed, and they do a great job. Now, a big, uh, I don't know, issue within the entertainment community is everyone's talking about the net, the net's the future, I said in the introduction. Everyone wants to know how and when are we gonna be able to monetize the net. Uh, you're, you're knee deep in it with a, with a few different shows. What, do you have any thoughts or opinions on it? Are, are you doing okay with the projects you're working on, getting compensated and so forth? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, like, if we're able to pay ourselves. I mean, it's not, you know, anything. Like, I mean, I kind of go from job to job to job. I'm not able to, like, take a break. Um, with the, I mean, the one nice thing about the Guild now is that when I do work on it, I can just focus on the Guild. Like, I can, I don't have to worry about, I got to be, at this other job, like I, I'm usually able to like take four months and just do that show only, which is nice because with Comedy Gumbo it wasn't that way, and with a lot of the shorts we've done, it was like we still had day jobs or, you know, we're still kind of like splitting our time. But as far as the web goes, I mean, it's hard though because you know, we're back. We have a sponsor now. Um, I know that like YouTube does monetizing. I don't know. Are you familiar with that at all? With when YouTube monetizes? A little bit. Uh, Brian can actually probably hop in and explain it. Yeah, but basically what it is is you know if if. YouTube gets a hold of your channel and they say like, hey, you're really popular, you're doing well, like can we run ads on your videos and then basically you get paid, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what the, what the math is on, on the hits, but like X amount of hits, you get compensated yeah, for Yeah, I it. saw a commercial on a, a guild related thing I watched on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, no, I don't know, I mean like I still, you know, like it's not, it's not huge, I mean we're still a very low budget show despite the fact that we can say that we're sponsored by Microsoft and Sprint and all these big name companies, like we're still a very low but budget. Five year, or three or four years uh, ago, it wasn't probably even possible to do what you're doing. No, not at so all. So hopefully three or four years from now, you know, it'll grow and. Yeah, I, I definitely hope so. I hope it, you know, grows. I hope that like, you know, and I think maybe the reason for that is because the content for the web is so short, you know, like so when, you know, if, if there is an audience for 22 minute like sitcoms, then maybe they'll have those kind of budgets right. in the future. Well, we have a, a question. Let me see if I can read this name. Felicia Day wants to ask you something. <laughs> she would like to ask you, what is Sean's dream project to direct? What kind of movie? Um, I'm a huge sci-fi nerd. Um, I've never directed sci-fi. I mean, I'd love to do it. I love to redo the Star Wars prequels. That would oh, be fun. Yeah. A little high five on that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would start with the Clone Wars, I think. That was episode one, and then episode two would be what episode three was, and then... I mean, that's not going to happen. I don't know why I'm even going off on this. Um, no, I don't know. I, would lo I, I love sci-fi. I love science fiction. I'd love to do something along... I love superhero movies. I'd love to do something along those lines. It's something um, that I would want to build to. I think uh, Kevin Smith had done it recently, like he was gonna do Green Hornet and then just said like, I don't have that movie in me, that's not my movie. Um, so for now, like as a realistic goal, I would love to just do like a movie that like is just hilarious, like throughout, you know, something like, you know, what The Hangover is. I, I, wanted, I would love to create a movie that generates that kind of buzz where like, it isn't like, oh, if you're into indie comedy, you'll like this, but other than that, I just want something that just everyone can watch and just enjoy, because those are the movies that I love. I love, um, I just saw Kill Bill again the other mm -hmm. day. Um, it's such a fun movie. Yeah. And Inglorious Bastards is such a fun movie. Like that's, you know, I'm not gonna narrow myself into like any kind of like niche, like which, I mean, just as long as like, something that I can have fun doing in a movie that I would love to see. But, you know, like I said, more realistically, um, like I would just love to do just a hilarious movie. Now, are you seeking out opportunities to make films? Are you happy with the stuff you're doing with Awkward Pictures? Um, is there gonna be a season four of The Guild? 
Um, season Felicia, I'm not sure that's more. I guess, I guess you could probably ask Felicia now. Felicia, um, chime in. Give me, give me a scoop, Felicia. Help me out. <laughs> yeah, that may be a question for her. I can actually relay a lot of these to her if I wanted to. <laughs> that's right. That's but um, no, I mean, like, I mean, this is what I'm doing. I'm like, th I, this is taking up all my time right now, um, as far as working on the guild and working on stuff for awkward pictures. Um, I, yeah, I'd definitely. I'd love to do TV. Um, I've always been a big fan of, of it, and I think for me, it's like the step up, like you know, short films, and then like a web series, and then. You know, it's just the way that I work. I know a lot of people can just jump right into a feature. Um, and I know a lot of friends who have done that. Um, oh, it seems like sci-fi is making its way to network television. I didn't catch it, but did you see that new show, V? V? No, I haven't oh, yet. Okay. seen it yet. And then there's the uh, the one on uh, ABC where everyone forgets for a couple of minutes. Is that Flash Forward? F flash Forward, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Um, I think uh, Michelle, uh, who plays Riley, just filmed a spot on that. Great. Um, but no, I haven't... Uh, I've, my uh, DVR is like full right. because I've been working on the guild, and right. then once the guild was done, it was like now we get to do the DVD extras, yeah, you know. And so um, we just wrapped. So, so now I can finally like start catching up on shows and stuff. D Evolution. Any more news about the uh, guild comic from Dark Horse? Once again, uh, Felicia question. <laughs> well, no, um, I know that it's going to be. I, I don't even. I don't know. I feel weird talking about her project. Right. Uh, I know that. Um, I don't know if she wants to spill anything. I guess I could ask her that too. Wait, I'm supposed to be writing it right now. Do it. <laughs> Talk away. Are you looking at? You can see I, that. I, I, I can see. You can see the chat. You have room. amazing vision. Wow. Uh, I just realized that I had astigmatism. In my heart and I got it corrected. <laughs> okay. And, and it's like kind of pain. I don't know if it's really paying off. Or <laughs> um, no, she's doing a three-issue comic for Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. Um, it's gonna be a prequel mm -hmm. to the Guild, kind of like how they all got together. Codex's okay. life before the Guild. Um, I've read. The first issue, and it's very funny, and it's it's great. It's like I said, like I'm a huge fan of the show. Right. On top of working on it, so like, had you been a fan of it before you worked on it? I had. I had seen a few episodes, um, and I liked the show. I hadn't seen them all actually. So when I got asked to to direct it, I wanted to go back because I, I I'm not a gamer. Like I play a lot of console games. I'm probably gonna get a lot of crap for this, but <laughs> I, I I don't like I I wouldn't direct the guild if I was playing WoW. You know, <laughs> I, I would get sucked in. Like right. I used to play a lot of role-playing games like Zelda and Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy and all that. So when the guild came about, it was like, this is a game about WoW, and I watched it, but I still thought the characters were funny. And when they had um, asked me to direct it, I went back and watched it and just fell in love with the show, like not being a gamer, which is great. I think it's like like you said, you've never seen it until today. And, yeah. and, well, I will and, say, and it's your new favorite show of all time. I, that's right. I, I watched one episode out of context, just picked one at random a few months ago because uh, Brian Grimmel, founder of the Stream.TV, executive producer of Film Nut, is a huge fan of it. So I said, let me try one. Out of context, it, I thought it was okay. But when I watched it from first episode on, I, I just fell in love with it. It was, it was so clever, so brilliant. Everyone does such an amazing job on it. Mm -hmm. ADA stuck. When... When you're all chilling and all, what kind of music do you listen to? Very technical question about filmmaking. <laughs> yes, that's from Film Student, <laughs> '93. Um, we don't. I don't. I don't mean we don't. I mean, um, our when we're on set, like we've got. You know, sometimes we're not directly on set, so um, our sound mixer on set. Um, you know, who's he gives us like headsets and we'll wear them. And between takes, he's always blasting like, he's, like rock music nonstop. So I guess that's what we listen to. That's. We don't really have to, we're shooting, so we don't listen to music too much. How long does it take to shoot a specific episode? Um, well, it's hard because, like, take the guild chat scenes, for example. You've got six characters. I mean, not, I'm not even including season three where we've got, like, 11 now. Right. But we have six characters. We shoot each episode basically six times because we have to get your lines plus your reactions to the other lines plus other angles. So, I mean, if you look at an episode that's, say, five minutes... And I'm going to do some awful math right now. So look at something that's five minutes. You've got six people, so we've shown it six times. Plus, we've got two angles. Mm -hmm. Plus, And you're not get, getting everything on the first take, right? No, no. We usually go about four takes, four to five mm -hmm. to nine. To four. <laughs> no, we usually about four to five uh -huh. on each one. Um, and it's kind of like we'll do it. Like, I always let the actors do what they want on the first one, and then I'll give them notes. And then sometimes Felicia or Kim will have a note. And um, then by the end, like, we've not only got different options, but we've got different types of performances. And then, like, you know, if we have time, we'll go for, like, alternate lines and just kind of have fun with it. But um, I threw out a lot of numbers, and I lost track. So <laughs> if someone was keeping track, I'm sure there's a calculator handy on your computer. Uh, six times, two coverages, four takes each. Yeah, yeah, it adds up. 
we shoot 4,000. 4,000. I may be off, but right. 4,000 hours for each episode. Give or take. X-Men Chick, female fan of the X-Men, let's see, what's your favorite part of filming the Guild? Um, with the Guild, I mean, I'm, like I, I'm gonna bring this up a lot, but like being a fan of the show, it's fun to watch the show develop. It's like when Felicia's done with scripts, I can be like, oh cool, I can read new episodes of the Guild and like read it and get into it. And then if I'm at home, it's like, oh, I guess I'll make a new episode of the Guild right now and like start editing and like I'm watching new episodes as they're evolving. But um, I, it, it's, it's fun. I love working with the actors. They're all really great and they're all um, very good at what they do and just everything that they bring. I mean, the whole crew in general, like everyone who's involved is a fan of the show, which is great because we'll put out a thing that says, um, hey, we need volunteers, and they're all fans of the show, and, right. and they're extras. And so everyone's there because they want to be, which is a huge difference than, you know, because we're still low budget, so no one's making, like, TV right. money or film money, but everyone's there because they want to be. And so, and that's from shooting to, like, you know, everyone mixing audio. is like, I'm, you know, everyone's just so excited about the show. And it's, just, it's nice to see that, rather than, like, we're trying to make this, and hopefully you'll be proud of it. It's like everyone's just really into it. Yeah, you're, you're all into it and you know you're a part of something special, so that kind of makes it cool. Now, you said you did read um, Felicia's first prequel? Mm hmm Better than the uh, Star Wars prequels? Yes, so far? yeah, okay. and there's three, so I guess that issue one, two, and three. <laughs> there you go. Will work out. Now, you did also, you talked about shooting them alone, but there was a lot of scenes where uh, Vork and uh, Sandeep were together, right? Mm-hmm, yes. Were those fun to shoot? Were those, you know, working together all, all together? Yeah, definitely, it was fun for them. Um, it was hard to get like a third person there. I remember when we were shooting with Sandy, it's uh, season two, it was the poker scene. Oh, Blaze, right. Blaze, yeah, uh, Blaze. who was wildly entertained right. by the two of them. <laughs> and I think you'll see it on the gag reel okay. uh, for season two, you'll see how he was just like, he was cracking all the time. But it's funny though, because Sandeep and Jeff are very professional, like they'll, they're, they're saying hilarious stuff, but they're keeping a straight face. Right. And then, meanwhile, we're in the back, like, biting our lips right. and trying not to blow takes. Right. Like, there's this great scene in um, episode uh, 11 um, of the party scene where Vork is behind Blades and he's, Blades is trying to talk to Tinkerbala and he's the whole time stuffing stuff in his pockets. And that was the one time where, like, during filming, I started laughing. Right. Meanwhile, Jeff's like straight stone faced the entire time. Now, Blades, he's a magician in real life. I was getting ready for you to whip out some card tricks in that episode. He did. Um, I mean, he, oh no, not in that scene. I mean, in the poker scene, he kind of did a little bit. But it was funny because of the coverage that we had gotten, it was almost like a cutaway to his hands. Right. But that was really him doing it. Okay. But I remember watching, I'm like, people are going to think that we cut away to right. a stunt. And sure enough, it's like, was that a stunt guy? Right. But no, that's him. He's, uh, he got to show off a little bit in two and one. We didn't do it in, th in season three, though. Okay. Except for the big card scene battle at the end, which I'm lying about. <laughs> <laughs> Website guy, are your days shorter now that you have a larger budget or longer because of that? Um, they're very long. I mean, we're shooting full 12 hour to sometimes 14 hour days because, um, you know, we're still like working with, you know, I mean, it's definitely nice to have the budget, but we're still trying to make it work as well as we did. And the way that we had kind of scheduled things out was we shot, I believe it was 14 days um, and most of those days were, were 12 hour days and it was like, you know, in season two, we shot episode by episode. So we were consistently coming back to Codex's apartment. Whereas this season, we shot like a feature where we would just go there for one or two days and shoot the entire season at once. And so no, no, I mean, our, our days were just very long, trying to make the most of it in a, in a minimal amount of time. So know? does Felicia write the seasons, the full season in advance? You have, you're looking at the, she the does, script yes. for the season? Yeah. yeah. And, um, I think it was just because of our schedule, we shot episode by episode, but we treated this one like a full feature and shot it completely. We actually shot the very last scene of the season first and the first scene last. Right. And I can't talk about. So hours of. wise then, what would, it, what would be your most challenging day or the most challenging 12 to 14 hour day you had shooting? Uh, the GameStop stuff in season three was by far the most challenging because that was something that was not local. We were out in Orange County for that and it was like 104 degrees. I'm gonna say 120. Right. Just uh, It was 92, but every time it, you tell the story, it gets hotter, right? The thermometer lies, yeah. Jeff. And so, um, no, and it was like we had to shoot 10 pages a day with 12 actors. Mm, wow. um, and right before that, we had shot um, the battle scene, which you're about to see and I can't talk about. I wanna talk about it. 
No. I, I can talk. I can talk about it. no. Sure. Felicia's no. using yeah. caps. Okay. <laughs> I can talk about it. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, no, that was just more challenging just because we had so much to shoot. We were establishing the season. We had so many actors to work with. Um, it was so hot. It was the end. This was the end of our shoot, too. Like, we had gone 14 days, and everyone was drained by that point. But um, So on a day like that, do you have to make choices, maybe not get everything you wanted? You talk about I, I try not to. There are days where, like, we'll get to certain points where it's like, okay, we need to kind of just rush this, and we can only get the one angle. And... Um, and I, I do do it. I, I really try not to because then in the end it's like, oh, I wish we could have got more coverage. But then, like, for example, with that scene, since it was an exterior, uh, the sun's going down. Mm -hmm. And you'll see in the gag reel, there's one point where we're getting a shot of Bork dragging the tent all yeah. the way to the back of the line. Uh -huh. And literally we had maybe two, three minutes of sunlight left to get that. So it was like he dragged the tent back and then all the crew would run out, grab it, bring it back, <laughs> and we did it twice more. But, like, literally the sun's going down and it's like, then fear starts to kick in of like, wow, like, if we're at Felicia's apartment, we can just, you know, stay and go over and get this and light it. But when you're outside, getting an exterior shot, <laughs> right. the widest shot of the entire show, right. like, you know, then you start to rush. But no, I mean, yeah, I mean, that definitely kicks in. Like, we definitely have to, you know, and it's like, you try to learn it next time. It's like, okay, we can't spend a lot of time on these scenes. Let's get it and go because then we'll have more time for the end of the day. Because you'll get stuck in that. I mean, you'll get somewhere and you'll work with someone. It's like, we have a whole day ahead of us. And do, do it again, do it this way, do it that way. Right. But then you realize, right. like, oh, crap, like, this is cutting into our time at the end. Yeah, no, as an actor, I know when my coverage comes last, I better be on my game. You know, yeah, right, yeah. Right, if it's an exterior. Because... Every, everyone is. I mean, everyone knew. Because like, inevitably, the morning stuff always gets more time. <laughs> and that was the big thing with the seasons. We shot in such a tight schedule. Everyone was on their game. We're like, you know, because we, we had to be. Like, and you know. And oftentimes, you don't rehearse. Is that correct? Uh, we'll rehearse on set. On set okay. um, we rehearsed. Um, this We did rehearse this season just because we had so many actors, and we didn't have time to rehearse on set. Um, but usually we'll do a table read, and then after that we'll do um, rehearsal if we need it for like crucial scenes. But other than that, it's like, yeah, we'll just show up to set early, and I'll take you aside while they're setting up, and we'll start running lines, you know. I believe uh, Brian has a question. Uh, yes, I would feel uh, like I lost an opportunity if I didn't insert myself into the show. I'm insert, such huge, baby. <laughs> yes, I'm such a huge fan of uh, Felicia and the Guild and Sean. Uh, and again, congratulations on everything. I, I want to talk about the GameStop. I have a kind of a two-part question there. When I was watching it, of course, I'm like constantly just looking at like uh, video levels and, and things of that nature. And on the reverse shots, not to get too technical here, it l appeared almost green screened. So I was wondering, did you have to do pickups with green screen or was just the dealing with the light in a way uh, where it just caused it to look like that? And a quick second part of the question is, how'd you guys get GameStop to let you do that? Was that like a Microsoft hookup? Actually, I like the first part of your question a lot because I'm not, I don't have nearly the eye that you do, Brian, and I thought the same thing about potentially the green screen. Yeah, no, I mean, everyone did. And no, it was, that was shot on location. It was just the position of the sun, like, really lit up the back the way it did. And it, actually, we had to dole that out in post because it looked, it was really vibrant in the back, but it didn't match anything else that we had um, because, you know, we're shooting this out of order throughout an entire day and the sun's consistently changing. So as an example, that sun was just perfect on that one spot. Uh, but no, it was not green screened, uh, even though it looks like it was. Yeah. And then um, the GameStop thing, that was, uh, that's like kind of another Felicia question. Like I just kind of showed up and said, okay, cool, GameStop. Like we were looking at game places in the area and stuff. And then um, I think it was just through them contacting game. I'm gonna just say that's the truth. Right. Not <laughs> right. I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but. Um, I appreciate sure that they just contacted GameStop and GameStop agreed to like, yeah, like, you know, uh, we'll let you guys shoot here in exchange for, of course, like, you see GameStop. Right. So it's like an ad for them. I mean, you know, we've got a show that's got 25 million hits. Uh, do you want your brand on it? And I think I think it was, a, I'm going to say it's as simple as that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Cupcheck would like to ask, what is your thoughts about working with a group of people with such a cult following? How often do you guys get recognized? Uh, they get recognized all the time. Right, um, of course. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, I will. Uh, there's whenever we go to conventions, um, they're like celebrities. It's 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 fun to watch. It's really great. But like even like I think Jeff had said it once. Jeff Lewis said, you know, when you're recognized at the Great Steak and Potato Factory at the Houston airport that you've made it. You know, right. and uh, no, they, I mean like m you know outside of the show, like we don't hang out too much. So like I'll. Um, go to conventions with them, and you know everyone's recognizing all the time. But then once in a while, like I'll be out. It, it's it's kind of weird sometimes. Like 
I'll be talking to Felicia, and she's like, look, someone had spotted us at breakfast. So you go on Twitter, and it's like, just saw Felicia Day and the Guild right. at, at Aroma Cafe, you know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that, that's a little, that's funny. But um, no, they, they get recognized a lot. Let's see, final questions. Brian, you got another one? Uh, I, don't want, I don't want to use any, any questions up. We're running out of time. We're okay. Out of time. Um, I want to get another general question about the internet in general. Um, who are the players out there? You mentioned Crackle. Uh, if someone wanted to maybe try to be the next producer of the Guild, any advice for them for putting a show together both on the from the creative point of view and then from the technical of, of how do they get to Crackle, how do they get to Hulu or whoever the players are? Um, I'd say from a creative point of view, I mean, it's like, I'm, this is just something I've been told and it's nothing really new, but you just do, do write what you know. I mean, like, with the Guild, Felicia played WoW for months and then wrote about that, you know, like, um, like our, our show, Comedy Gumbo, like, you know, we're in a sketch comedy, these are ideas we've had for a while, you know, we just try, I mean, like, I guess if you're a, if you're putting a show together and you've never put one together before, like, don't don't get too ambitious, like, save that for your next project, like, write what you know and, and film it and, you know, as far as approaching places like Crackle, um, I'm not really sure because we were set up with a meeting with them, but I, I would say just go to these sites, um, and I was like, Crackle, there's Coldcast, there's... Babblegum, I, I know there's a ton more, but those are the ones I just recently, like, I, I know friends who work on those shows. Um, go to their page, you know, find their contact info, and, like, say, hey, are you guys accepting pitches? Um, I guess would be the way to go. Well, I have another recommendation. If you're trying to get a new show out there, watch every episode of The Guild from beginning to end <laughs> <laughs> to see an example of a good, successful one, and, you know. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing with the guild, I mean, it's, the writing and the characters are just so strong to where, like, you don't have to be a gamer to watch yeah, it, you know? So, absolutely. You know, yeah, that, that's perfect. Like, take look at it and think, like, why is this show, why do people like this show, you know? Yeah. Like, my parents, like, I wanted to just bleed from the ears explaining to them what the guild was, you know, because right. they, 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 <laughs> they don't own a computer or now, have the internet, you know? Now, intuitively, I just Google searched the guild, and I wound up watching every episode I can find right off the Guild's website. Mm -hmm. But where, is that the best place or are there other places people can watch it? Oh, uh, right now you can watch it on um, MSN Video. Um, I don't even, I just Google the Guild right. MSN right. when I go to it. There's the Guild MSN, um, I know it's on the Zoom Marketplace, it's on Sprint, it's on, uh, X Xbox Live is the best way to watch it if you, um, if you have the capability because it's the only format you can watch it in HD. Like even when we put it out on DVD, it's still not full HD, but you can watch it in full, uh, I think it's uh, 720 um, HD on Xbox Live. Um, and then eventually once the shows air, uh, then they'll, we, we put them up on YouTube like months later. Okay, now for people who want to find out more all things Sean Becker, What's the website to uh, check out Comedy Gumbo and all the other great stuff? Yeah, go to um, www.awkwardpictures.com. That's got gumbo. That's got everything that Payment and I have done, uh, our short films from back in the day to like all of our recent stuff now. And then we have news on like upcoming projects. Uh, but all of our content is there. And true to our name, you can also see our awkward pictures, uh, which are actually like just terrible photos that we've taken with people. And then, um, I don't know, I don't have a web, I guess Twitter okay. is uh, twitter.com slash Sean Becker um, if you want to follow my, and, well, if, if you, you go, want to see what I had for lunch, if you, right. if you want to. Uh, if you go to the Awkward Pictures, you can get to your YouTube page from that, your Twitter. And yes, we've got the links to everything okay. on there and so all of our contact Spell info. that out one more time, Awkward Pictures. A-W-K-W-A-R-D-P-I-C-T-U-R-E-S dot com. Cool. The last question we'd like to get you out on is, what is your favorite set speak term? Set speak term. Yeah, back to one, checking the gates. Uh, lunchtime. There you go. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Uh, that's a wrap, I guess. I don't know. That's. I know it sounds lame, but that's a big sign of relief when you hear that's a wrap. Cool. That works for me. And Brian Grimaud, did you notice I got it right this time? Yes, set speak term. That's set term speak. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on. I'm so glad because it was great to meet you personally. But because of you coming on, I watched three great seasons or two and a half great seasons of The Guild, and I'm a fan of a new show. So thank well, you so much. Well, thank for you for having on. me on. And continued success with The Guild and everything else you're doing with Awkward Pictures. Thank you. You guys too. That is going to do it for this edition of Film Nut. Thanks so much for tuning in. Felicia Sandeep, thank you for tuning in. A special thanks. And we'll see you next time on Film Nut. Thank you.